still. But since this is work that would be required still, um, I'm happy to just go ahead and start actually implementing versus um, not doing anything and having the discussions continue along. So this is what I'm currently working on. Um, it will involve figuring out how best to create the beta CRD since we have um, two potential approaches to take. One is creating a distinct CRD where um, we don't necessarily have to conform to the alpha CRD schema. And the second approach will be having to conform to the alpha CRD schema while taking a field-based annotation approach to denote which fields are beta and which has been deprecated. So in my current um, issue, as I'm working, I'm going to first like figure out the pros and cons of both ways and see which approach we would prefer in terms of like how we want to promote CRDs moving forward in a sustainable way. And when, once I get that consensus and we all have the information to make it a solid decision, I will bring it to everyone involved and then move forward with implementing the better approach. Um, Gateway API has done the approach of um, creating separate CRDs to avoid having to like conform the schema, but they have have they have other like tooling in their ecosystem to facilitate that. So as of now, in either approach we take, Istio will need the relevant tooling to ensure that um, whatever we decide to do can be done effectively. So um, that's where I'm at. Any questions so far? Okay, cool. If not, um, moving on, one of the frictions I've been facing is a lot of the decision making around like the fields to promote is related to ambient in the sense that we aren't sure what the behavior will look like for that field in like a waypoint or gateway point of view. And because um, we don't necessarily have the answer to this and no one has done the investigation around this as yet, we have been more inclined to postpone the promotion of that field. But um, in my opinion, I think it would be super nice to have um, these discussions like bottle up and made a priority where we can actually direct energy to investigate and like, what does this look like in ambient? And I know Ambient has its own um, beta um, effort. And I don't know if they, I'm curious to pull you on in terms of like, how can we handle this? Especially since this is a part of like the larger Ambient architecture design. And I know there's a lot of things that we haven't figured out yet, but um, we do want to make sure that some of these fields that we aren't aware of what will happen in Ambient is at least track somewhere for future discussion. Um, any thoughts there? I'm curious to know what do you think. Yeah, I can chime in quickly. I think the biggest right now for Ambient is uh, the CNI integration. I think that's the biggest one. Um, prevent people to say, you know, before we have a CNI story, prevent people to say, hey, we can reach portions of ambient to beta, which is probably going to be like a single cluster, you know, focus on what you can do within that cluster, but not any of the extended environment. Yeah. And Based on Ambient having their own focus, I imagine it would be very hard for me to come in and be like, hey, this is important for telemetry. Can you extend like effort there? So like, is there a way for us to like capture this beyond maybe I mean, just creating an issue, I guess, an Ambient related issue? I mean, there are a couple of ways we're trying to capture this. So, so one way is uh, in the ambient workgroup meeting, right? We can tend to discuss this issue. There is a bug which you've probably seen to drive ambient to beta. Um, there's also recently an effort to compel uh, the features of ambient, uh, compare that with sidecar. So I actually created a spreadsheet on 
all the features we have for sidecar and trying to understand where we are for ambient there's a lot of a gap i mean not to say yes. we will not uh, release and we will wait release ambient production ready and hear all the feature of the sidecar right when we probably won't but it's always good to understand where we are i'm so happy to hear that has started because it's been like a lot of folks hinting at it, but no one actually did it yet. Do you have a link for that? Yeah, if you check the ambient uh, meeting minutes, uh, if you search, uh, I think I posted to the meeting minutes like two, three weeks ago. Um, if you can't find it, just pay me on Slack because I'm on my iPhone right now. It will, yeah, but it should be pretty easy. Just two or three weeks ago, I posted. Okay, perfect. Okay, sounds good. So it seems like, I will have to sort of like either bring this up in the ambient working group meeting or maybe just add a note to um the document, the active document for beta in terms of like, hey, please pay attention to the behavior and anything related to telemetry that I'm aware of. Cool. Okay. So that's it for my updates. Does anyone else have any any other updates? I'm going to take that as a no, and then we can move on to our other topics for the day. Um, the first one is around, like, how can we bring back having, like, the working group leads be intentional about like their roadmaps for um, a certain release cycle or year, similar to how we did it back in 2022 and before. So, um, yes. So I remember we went over this in the last meeting, but this was how road mapping was done in Istio in previous years, but since the working group leads have become less active. There has there haven't been any act any efforts around like driving this sort of like clarity around like what is a priority for each working group. And uh, based on our conversations that we have had in this meeting and like side conversations, we believe it is valuable for us to bring this back in some form. But we have to be clear around like what is the most effective way around doing this as well as um hopefully championing the poc to take leadership of this like we don't necessarily want to um guide this effort ourselves but we do want to spark um the resurrection of it so i'm curious for us to like discuss today like one is there anyone willing to volunteer like champion this with the toc and figuring out how best we can bring this back into like our regular operations in Istio. Whitney, I, I think um, I would potentially be willing to champion that, but I think before uh, I would feel confident, I'd want to start with what, what outcomes we're looking for. Um, if, if you look back historically, like uh, when we had a regular roadmap, uh, even when the project was really ha had a lot of people on it, which Interestingly, contributions are up. This is just a total aside. Con total contributions to the project are up. People contributing to the project are up. People attending the meetings are way down compared to, say, two years ago. Uh, when we had a lot of people attending those meetings and we produced regular roadmaps, uh, we almost always missed all of the roadmap. Um, <laughs> we, we very rarely landed uh, the efforts that we said we were going to work on. And then in addition to that, um, oftentimes the TOC did not have time to review all the roadmaps. So some work group leads put in a ton of time on their roadmaps and a lot of detail and did not get much attention from project leadership. Uh, others kind of probably anticipating that they weren't going to get a lot of attention, uh, didn't produce roadmaps at all. So I, I think we need to consider kind of what outcomes we're looking for. Certainly there's a little bit of a pain that we have, I think, collectively as a project about not having a clear roadmap uh, or not being able to execute on the little bit of roadmap that we have. But whatever solutions we come up with, we do al also have to keep in mind that uh, while we're all paid by our various companies, in Istio, we're all volunteers. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it does make a little bit of a difficulty if, say, the TOC were to give 
a concrete direction. We're going to move this way. Well, like I'm one of three contributors from Aviatrix. Uh, so I can assign those three contributors to move in that direction, but that's not going to make a large uh, impact unless, say, Google or Solo is also behind it. Yes, I agree. And I think we really do need to put a lot of intention behind like what we want out of this roadmap. Maybe we can take this time now to like start brainstorming in terms of like what are the benefits we are going for and uh, what are some of the things we want to ensure we don't get caught up in doing because we do want to make sure it's most valuable to the people who are making it happen as well as those who will consume the roadmap. Does anyone have any thoughts around like how this roadmap can benefit one, especially in the subgroup point of view, we want to know like the direction of certain features, you know, where our efforts will be best um, focused in terms of like graduating a feature or deprecating something that hasn't been a priority or is no longer relevant in Istio. Or maybe is it possible for the TOC to give some inputs to us saying, OK, please focus on this, these features with the upcoming release or something like that? Otherwise, it will get difficult for us if we have such a big roadmap and then we have to go through it to figure out what is to be deprecated and what is to be promoted. And in your suggestion, we don't necessarily need a roadmap. We just need the direction from the TOC in terms of like these features are important. Yeah, because if you open the other sheet, whatever you just opened now, it looks too <laughs> much for me to understand what has to be focusing. Yeah, that's a good call out in the sense if that's our main, that's the end game that we want as a subgroup. We just want to know what features to focus on and if the TOC can provide the add to us, is there any additional benefit for having a roadmap? If we are planning to have uh, this um, uh, STO day or, or something like that every year twice, we can even have a release planning meeting at the beginning, um, yeah, at least twice a year. And then probably everybody can brainstorm together to get these inputs the beginning of each release so that we can work towards that. I think we should be careful to think uh, about two different types of roadmaps. They're related, but they're not the same. One is the outward facing for our users. That's what we present at mm -hmm. Istio Day or Istio Con, whatever events that we have. Um, the other type of roadmap is for release planning so that engineers know what to be working on. Like for instance, if I were to work today on a multi-cluster for ambient, um, since that's not on the list of critical things for beta, it's not going to get us to beta any sooner. And my progress as a feature is more or less going to be blocked until those other features in ambient get to beta. So a, a strategy list that says, hey, like if, if ambient getting to beta is what my company really wants, here are the things I ought to be moving forward. These are the critical blockers. Yeah, and that helps That helps all of Istio, not necessarily the subgroup only. So I guess it's now a question of like, is this a task that we want to pick up as a subgroup, especially since we can get what we need out of like simply putting pressure on the TOC to give us one or two features? Yeah, I'd say probably not, like you said, uh, Whitney. So um, I think we've been doing relatively good job uh, what needs to be done for Ambient, right? Which is why we have the Drive Ambient to Beta document. We probably are not doing a great job on what else needs to be done outside of Ambient. Um, but uh, so we, we probably should revive some of that work. 
But on the other hand, MBA is kind of the priority for the community anyway, right? As we've learned uh, from all different feedbacks. Yeah, and I will follow that up in the sense that, yes, we're doing a good job with Ambient, but we aren't necessarily putting effort into figuring out all the other um, APIs and how Ambient will affect those. So that can be a good way to like get that work started again, or I'm still centering it around the Ambient um, discussion. Yeah, final comments on the API, like the telemetry API, I guess it's just not super high on the radar. Um, okay, so I guess to, if no one else has any other opinions, but what I'm hearing is that we don't necessarily want to put efforts to revive in a full on feature roadmap. However, um, we can put pressure on the TRC to give us the one or two features that we need. And we may even want to play an intentional role around like the planning meetings that happen twice a year for release planning. Um, however, right now the momentum in Istio is ambient. And if we were wanting to push anything, it would be around like how ambient impacts other non-ambient related like work that is still prevalent in Istio. Is that a good summary of what we just discussed? <laughs> Cool. So what will be our action item here? I think um, Lynn, you already started the, the comparison between our regular APIs with Ambient. I think that's a good push in the direction that we want to get in. So it's just a matter of us supporting you in that and being aware of that. Is there any ask that you need from us? Just to clarify a little bit, the one I started was like the feature, not necessarily on the scope of the API. I mean, it's close, but it's slightly different. Okay. And we may need a feature level scope. Not sure as yet. What do you think? You mean API level scope? The, yeah, the yeah. one I have was feature. Yeah, probably. Uh, by the way, we do have an ambient API document. Um, we do expect most of the API would be the same, but it probably would go, be good to highlight the ones that's different. Okay, sounds good. So it seems like the action item is to review what you have done and see if we need to do that same effort for the API level scope and continue writing the momentum in terms of like, actually having solid outcomes out of this comparison. Okay, so I believe we can move on. Um, the next, unless there's something else anyone else wants to add. Cool. The next topic for discussion is in regards to us selecting a feature to deprecate. Um, in our last meeting, we have decided that if we are creating any processes, such as the deprecation process, um, we want to have a feature attached to that work where we can use that feature as um, a clear example as we actively go through the work and we can capture the learnings to create the process or improve the process as we know it. Um, so the next thing that we have to do in regards to deprecation is actually choosing a feature or API to deprecate. Um, and I hope that we can potentially discuss potential features as well as maybe even apply that pressure to the TOC to give us a feature that they think may be best. So as of now, based on ongoing conversations in the community, um, we have potential candidates such as Envoy, Filter, or Stats. 
and we have in cluster Istio operator as well, and potentially even Lua. So these are the three that I have. I don't have any intimate like opinions or sh on these, but I've heard other folks have expressed interest, and I'm curious if you're aware of like if any of these candidates are valid or is there anything that stands out to you or if there's any other features that you would like to add to the, the potential candidates for the application. Is anyone familiar with Envoy filter stats and why we want to deprecate it? No, is that different than Envoy filter? Um, I believe it's a, a component within Envoy Filter. So for my understanding, Envoy Filter is like this really gigantic thing <laughs> with the ability to do all these different things. It, is the stats one specifically something that we expect to be superseded by the telemetry API? Um, that's a great question. Let's see. I don't know the answer to it, but we definitely should get that answer. But in whatever we deprecate, we do want to be clear of like what is the alternative to doing this. Yeah, definitely. That makes sense. And probably not deprecating it before the replacement is available, I, I would assume. <laughs> yes, exactly. John confirm it will be superseded by the telemetry API. It's not really, it can't really be deprecated. Like it's Envoy filter allows you to do anything you can do in Envoy. So unless we're deprecating all of Envoy, you can't say that you can't do one thing that, and not another thing. So okay, now no one should use it. They should use telemetry unless <laughs> you have advanced use cases, but. Um, so I think this one's kind of oddly categorized. OK. Is there any way to, so there's no way to block certain functionalities, I guess? I mean, in theory, we could, but it's just kind of like, why? Like, the whole point right. of the API is to give you access to anything you want, and you deal with the consequences. So uh, now, removing all documentation of it or anything like that, that, that makes sense. But I think we've already done that. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. It's just really documentation to guide people to better experience with this, with the other thing, rather than trying to actually like encode, deprecate anything. That makes sense. OK, that's interesting. Cool. How about in cluster Istio operator? Is anyone familiar with that and potentially the case for deprecation? I think it's already disallowed for MBA, if I'm not mistaken. And it's hard to deprecate for sidecar and message it properly. So we just did it for MBA. Is it hard because it's still somewhat in use? Yeah, uh, some people that apparently likes it a lot. Some people have really bad taste in technology, and so they really <laughs> like it. But it's absolutely terrible. Um, so we're in a weird state. Uh, yeah. Is there any work needed to understand like use cases better of like what they're doing with it? I fundamentally think that people are just don't know how to operate Kubernetes correctly and so they like it. I haven't heard I've asked a lot of people and like they're smart people. I'm not saying this is like just a group of dumb people using it. It's just people that have uh, opinions on how you should run things in Kubernetes that don't really align with at least how I think and I think a lot of other people on our our team think. Um, like some people think that you somehow need it for GitOps. I would argue it's actually opposite of the GitOps principles. Um, some people think it's easier. Uh, I mean to, tomato, tomato, I guess it's up to you to decide. But to me, it's like, I really, really hate operators. So I, I could rant all day. Um, 
but to me i haven't seen any really valid opinions but you know there's people using it so it's hard to to get rid of we've already tried basically doing everything but deprecating it's like on the docs there's all these warnings not to do it we don't put new features there we tell users not to use it and whatnot but we have avoided the specific word deprecation because we found that people don't understand like technically the word deprecate generally means it's just not recommended so by that definition we have deprecated it but most people think deprecated means it's either already removed or it's going to be removed very shortly um, so we've avoided the word for that ambiguity reason i noticed we don't actually remove stuff in istio is there any reason for that because we know we don't want to support this but there isn't any effort to actually remove it from the istio offering um so there's the general istio uh black what not removing things and then there's the installation which is like the extreme version so if you go back four years ago uh the thing everyone complained about istio is that every version we changed how our install works and so we we overcorrected quite a bit by not making any changes to it for <laughs> for many years um so that that's some context i mean in general the reason not to remove it is because people may use it and you remove it they get mad and you know it's hard it's easier to, to do nothing than to it's easier to do nothing, slightly less easy to add something, and really, really, really hard to remove something, I would say. So it tends to be that we do nothing instead. I know it, it seems like we have been taking like a, a lukewarm approach in terms of like strong opinions. Uh, if, do, will you support if we remove it and do it in, we are removing it with the goal of having users complain and be directed to like the better way of doing something. I guess I'm asking, why don't we create chaos <laughs> for the greater good? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think we should just uh, straight out remove it, but I, there has been some discussion on how we can migrate off it. Um, so. The, the kind of two things you need to have a smooth removal is a migration path to something else. And actually, I guess that's, that's the one thing. <laughs> um, so Red Hat has been working on a, a alternative operator implementation and that they wanted to move into East Geo ecosystem. It is not compatible, like it's completely different. Uh, but there's been some possible idea that we could say, look, we're done with operators. If you really want one, here's this third party one that you can go use and contribute to. Like, bye, go deal with that. And we can uh, do some some off ramping there. Now, the thing is, if we're saying that as a project, we don't like these two operators, that's actually the wrong migration path because you want users to adopt to Helm and in cluster East to Cuddle or the whatever we call these two Cuddle. Um, so we'd probably also want those. Um, there's some issues. Let me just see if I can find it. Um, kind of brainstorming. Uh, possible paths here that we could in the, the chat because I don't have the stock open, uh, but we can put it in the doc. Um, so there's a lot of ideas there. I, I think we there's definitely work we can do to improve the situation. I just not clear exactly the, the details to me. Cool. Okay. Um, so it seems like this is a stronger candidate for us exploring deprecating whatever that means in istio is there any other potential candidates you can think of and i guess once again to repeat the goal of this is to actually just get the ball rolling and we will obviously come across walls but that can help us know how to handle these in the future and I, ideally, anything that we come across or anything that we do to get this deprecated, and as we understand deprecation further, we want to create a clear process for it, hopefully track it in the enhancements repo. That is sort of like, this is how we do things that are related to deprecation in this way. At least that's the end game. And, uh, Gateway API does this really well, where they track their like processes for different things in their like enhancements repo. And obviously it's like a living document where we 
updated over time and we use it as like the source of truth to guide others on how to do it. Okay, well, the other potential option was Lua, but Lua is still pretty much in use. I think that would be a difficult one to get consensus on. Um, if anyone else has anything to contribute there, feel free to jump in. But I believe that will be, that is our hardest candidate yet. That's the same comment I have on this task one, like it's on with a filter, so it's not clear what deprecating it actually means. Like we don't support Lua anyways. Okay, cool. Um, that's all on my agenda for the day. Anyone has anything that they would like to bring up now or discuss? If not, we can get back to the rest of our time. Thank you all for coming. Thanks. Have a great Thank week, you. everyone. Bye.